Thank you, Dennis. Uh, thanks, HP, for hosting this event. Um, starting in 1983, I worked here a couple of two different times, so it's a little bit like uh, old home week. Um, and I suppose a lot of you are here from California wondering if your tax dollars are being well spent, and I hope hopefully after the presentation you think so. Uh, we tested a direct liquid cooling technology from Aztec in one of our data centers at Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory. This presentation is an overview of those efforts and includes some results. Here's a presentation agenda. I'll spend a few minutes on acknowledgments because the project had so many partners and a lot of hard work by a lot of different people. I'll discuss a bit about the results we wanted to achieve along with describing the, the tests we completed. Then I'll discuss how the data was collected and our attempt to turn the data into useful information. The casual observer might think of a project like this as just plug in a rack of servers and take a few power measurements. Well, as it turned out, uh, as it often turns out, uh, things are, not, are more complicated than originally envisioned <clears throat> and it required the, the required effort expands. Many companies and people were involved with completing this project. So first of all, uh, the California Energy Commission sponsored our efforts at, at LBL and uh, Paul Rogensack is the program manager. Paul, raise his hand, he is here. And uh, we should certainly mention Azitec who provided the cooling technology equipment and everybody that's from Azitec, please raise your hand. So uh, we have four or five different people here. <coughs> uh, specifically, Steve Branton, Anderson Sai, and Steve Empedocles. Also, Cisco was another major partner. They supplied the servers we used. Intel supplied the processor chips, latest processor, Ivy Bridge processor chips for the, uh, for the servers. <coughs> also, we used Julex Software, which that company is now a part of Cisco. Uh, they supplied the software needed to collect the data from the various pieces, as, as you'll see in the, in the later slide. Cisco Hennessy Group provided the modeling uh, assistance. Uh, Ian Kupma and Valley Sorrell. Ian, you want to raise up your hand? There's Ian. He ran the Romanet software, which was used to turn the data into uh, understandable, uh, useful results. Also, I want to mention uh, ServerTech. They donated two PDUs that we used to collect the, the uh, server power individually for each server. And there's a lady here, Cindy, from ServerTech. So those worked flawlessly during our uh, testing, which was great, a big help. Um, I'd like to also thank the High Performance Computing Services Group, uh, managed by Gary Jung. And I'll call out a specific few people who are here today. Uh, Susan James, raise your hand. So without Susan's constant 24-7 effort to keep things going and supply BIOS upgrades and so on and so forth, we probably wouldn't have completed this project. So many thanks to Susan. Uh, another person to mention is Young Kin, who provided the software to uh, take the JSON files from the Jolex files file server and uh, turn those into CSV so I could do something with them. Uh, Karen Persler is also here. Karen, raise your hand. And Bernard Lee. Uh, in addition, we want to thank the data center itself that uh, allows us to come in there and come in here and goof around and do all kinds of experiments where most data centers don't let us do that. And the manager there is Mike Magstad. And um, Mike, please raise your hand. Higher than that. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, and last but not least, my uh, esteemed colleague, Steve Greenberg, who helps me in these uh, endeavors on, on any kind of testing and so forth to keep me honest. Okay, so that's the acknowledgments. Thank you for sitting through that, but it's important. There's a lot of people involved, a lot of companies involved. Okay, uh, the technology that we, that we tested or demonstrated was from Azitec, the basic concept shown in the diagram. Okay, <coughs> basic columns shown in the diagram. The, uh, the CPU chips are cooled with an integrated pump and cold plate. So that's pretty 
pretty convenient, potentially uh, unique. Uh, circulates the water to a liquid to liquid heat exchanger. From there, on the other side of the liquid to liquid heat, heat exchanger, you can connect that to your building chilled water system. Um, you see in the picture one of the servers that we used in our demonstration. The CPUs are cooled with the uh, CPU uh, module. You can see it's sort of the round, the round pieces there. And there's also uh, structures that go around and contact the memory modules that provide additional cooling. Demonstration goals. So the evaluation approach was to compare site level energy consumption using equivalent compute power for a base case, normal air cooling, and the liquid cooled case fitted with Azatec cooling. For this comparison, we needed to know the fraction cooled by the direct cooling. In order to determine the fraction by the direct cooling, all we need to do is measure the electrical power. This is pointer. Oh yeah. Okay, electrical power in here, and then we measure the, uh, that information is fed uh, to the data collection system, and the BTU uh, water uh, heat energy is collected here and fed, and fed to a calculation here, and this is put into the Romanet software. We provide data center uh, descriptions here, and the output is site energy uh, use and uh, PUE. For the base case, it's, it's simple, just for air-cooled servers, since the, the heat generated is the same as the power supply, that's pretty easy to determine what, uh, what's going on there. Um, the static line is not really needed, it's just something that the software can assume because the heat remaining has to go into the data center. So that's uh, sort of the overview of the, of the calculation method. Key variables, the parameters were adjusted each test for water supply temperature, water flow rate in order to adjust the water return temperature, and the IT heat level. We had three heat levels, idle, what we call 50%, and 100%, which is about 440 watts per server. We used uh, uh, HP Linpack running on Scientific Linux to uh, provide the software needed to, to produce that heat. I have a few slides now on the setup. You see here on the, on the left that 38 uh, Azatec cooled Cisco servers in a rack. In the foreground here we have Electron CDU. This is not part of the Azatec product. It uh, was used to adjust the water temperature for our tests. Over here on the right you see the, the back of the rack with the uh, Azatec CDU there on the side of the rack which is, is part of the system and the tubes, the supply and return, return tubes that take the water to and from each server. More on the setup. Uh, our plumbing, uh, our plumber had a little bit of fun here putting together some uh, plumbing to supply to turn our chilled water loop in our data center into the a controlled supply temperature for the Azatec loop. And then uh, here on the right is some of the metering you probably uh, can recognize, but maybe not, the <coughs> ion power meters. These went to each PDU, the circuit tech PDUs. The BTU meter was, uh, two of them were used, one between the Vitron CDU and the Azotec CDU. I know there's a lot of use here. The, uh, on the, and then the other BTU meter was a check and a uh, check for stability between the, Azot, uh, the Vitron CDU and our facility chilled water. <coughs> Here's our data uh, data collection setup. You can see the data collection here using the Julex software database. We had an IPMI connection to each server. We measured the uh, front panel air input temperature and a few other things at each server. Also, it collected data for each um, power outlet in the in the PDUs to, for all the water cooled servers. In addition, you can see here where the B2 BTU meters were hooked up using a Modbus. So all this information got put into a time series database using the Julex software. Uh, I know this slide's a little hard to leave, read, so I have my uh, death by PowerPoint warning icon there in the upper right. 
Okay, uh, another little bit hard to read slide, but um, just so you think we actually did collect data and didn't, didn't make it all up. Um, this is the example of the data for the full power test. The top line, the red line there is the average power for the water-cooled servers. And then the next one down black is the average power for the air-cooled servers. It's a little hard to tell, but you can see the air-cooled servers use more power. Uh, we have the green and blue, which is the supply and return water temperatures. Fraction cooled by water is the purple line. So we picked places where the temperatures were stable in order to make our uh, calculations. And then also there's the front panel temperature and the water flow rate going to the Azotec CDU. Okay, here's something that's sort of finally interesting. Um, the upper, this is uh, some, some graphs showing the percent of the cooling provided by the Azotec technology. In the upper left here is 100% server load. We see that in most cases the uh, amount of uh, heat, uh, server heat removed is, uh, is 50% or better. And in the 50% uh, server load case there on the right, you can see that it drops off a bit. Uh, as the temperature of the CPU and memory is reduced, the ability to get the, the same fraction of heat out is also reduced. And we see here at the idle load, it's even more, uh, a little, even more extreme. Um, so we can see that almost no heat is, is gathered using 40 degrees C water because that is about the temperature of everything else in the server. And there's no way to get the heat out. So that's kind of a, an interesting result. So uh, this is sort of the first level of, of the, the results. Now we want, we, what we want to do is turn these results into something that's useful. So the next, the next task, here's another uh, sort of busy chart. We have the base case data center model, the cooling tower case data center model, the dry cooler case data center model, and the chiller only case data center model. So these, these models were put together and put into Romanet, and then the results from the previous slide were, were entered and that way we can determine the uh, net uh, energy gain or net energy efficiency for the entire data center. Um, we should note that uh, you see here this little item, you might not be able to read it, it's called chiller boost. So in some hot, on some hot days, you may not be able to make, make the required uh, temperature of water that you have set. In those cases, you, know, you can use the chiller to, to uh, what we call boost, it's actually reduce the temperature of the water going to the Azotec device. So we put that in there so that all hours could be covered um, for, for our simulation. We used the uh, San Jose, uh, California uh, climate model, or uh, climate data, and uh, these, these, uh, these configurations were, were run into the, uh, were run into, into the Romanet software. Uh, I should mention this chiller only case. So generally, we, we didn't think of this because we don't like to recommend anybody use the chiller to do anything. So, um, but I decided to include it, and then uh, Ian put it, made a model, and the results came out pretty interesting. We'll see, we'll see in a while. So this, is, this might be an opportunity. It's quite easy to just hook this up because there's very likely, if you have uh, chiller-cooled cross in your data center, you're going to have chilled water near, pretty nearby. Okay. Okay. Here's the uh, here's the results that we all been waiting for. So the this is the server load case. Uh, on the on the left here, this is the total energy consumption of the data center. Now we we have the PUE listed down here on the bottom, kind of for reference. In this case, since the IT load is not constant we should uh, not rely on PUE, it doesn't give reliable results. So what we do is we calculate the total energy used for the data center. So you can see that for the dry cooler case, cooling tower, and so on, all the different water temperatures applied, the results are very similar, which was a little bit, that's, that's interesting. Another thing that's even more interesting is not having a dry cooler or cooling tower or any of that stuff, if you just hook it up to your chilled water, you get very similar results. 
So this is was something that's a little bit of a surprise and you know kind of makes this kind of work interesting. Uh, another thing I might point out is you see this the size of this bar here is a, you know whatever the size it is, and approximately one half. For example, in this case, this this uh, HVAC and Azotec cooling combined is somewhere in the, the neighborhood of 50 percent. So we are saving approximately 50 percent of the energy required to do the cooling part in the data center. So that's kind of an interesting thing to to point out. Uh, here's the results for the 50 percent load case, approximately 270 watts per server. Again, the results are very similar and uh, also get a good benefit uh, out of just hooking up to the chilled water. And here's for the idle load case. Uh, hopefully none of you uh, have uh, servers in your data centers that are in idle, but I, I'm pretty sure people do. Um, there's fewer cases here because we weren't able to get the 10 degrees C delta that we put into the model and the models that we, we had. So only 20 degrees C water could be used, but still you see even at idle, there's a significant uh, energy, overall energy savings provided by uh, both the lowering of the IT uh, load and the HVAC load. Okay, conclusions. Um, this direct cooling technology should provide a significant reduction in total data center energy used on the order of 50% for uh, for 50% load, maybe around 20%. Using cold water when economically available reduces the total energy consumed for the climate model that we use San Jose. Other climates will provide different results. Well, this sort of alludes to the fact that you could just use cold water that's under your floor from a chiller, so that kind of combining that finding that we didn't really expect. And also, Pretty obvious, significant energy level savings should be possible using this technology, even though it does not capture 100% of the server waste heat.